I'm Greg McDonald and I'm the Director of Emergency Care and uh, I've now just been appointed as the head of the division of uh, acute and primary care as well. Diagnosis of syncope can be a bit complicated. If you get the classic story uh, of those three things, sudden loss of conscious, consciousness, falling, uh, waking up quickly, uh, then you get the context of the story, you can get the diagnosis most of the time. So we are fairly confident in our diagnosis, um, I'd say the majority of occasions, because we get a story of reflex or postural syncope. Uh, I did mention before that sometimes, particularly in older patients, the story is a bit greyer and vaguer. You're not quite sure whether they were lost consciousness, whether they fell, hit their head and were knocked out, and the fall was benign, you know, with a trip or something. So uh, it's a, the story can be a little bit hard. The next thing is we examine the patient. So, so we're trying to work out what's going on. We get a story, okay. Uh, it's a bit complicated, not sure. So let's examine them and see what we find. Do they have a heart rhythm problem? Um, do they have a heart valve problem? Uh, do they have an infection? Do they have another cause that might make them pass out? So we, we look for those things. We do an ECG and we look on the ECG for evidence of heart rhythm problems or signs that a heart rhythm problem might be likely. Okay, so we can see for uh, on some patients that they have uh, electrical changes in the ECG, which we can say, oh, okay, this person's the sort of person who's going to suddenly have a racing heart. So we can look, look for those sort of things. Again, um, may not find them. And we would admit up to half of syncope patients to the hospital and depending on uh, how things go, half of those still might not have a final diagnosis because we still can't find the thing. We can't find uh, any evidence for a risk factor. So we, and as an outpatient, that's even more complicated, right? So imagine you don't go to a hospital, you go to your GP. So what's the GP going to do? Try to go through all those processes over what, days, weeks, to try to work out what's going on. The patient looks okay in the GP's rooms. Are they going to send them to a hospital? Well, maybe not. Um, they're just going to try to work out what is going on. So, um, yeah, it, it, diagnostically it can be a bit challenging uh, and it can be a heart problem, it can be a neurology problem. Occasionally these patients are having seizures. Occasionally these patients are having um, poor blood flow to their brain because of cerebrovascular, you know, brain vessel disease. Um, so, and it, often these patients are old and they've got blood pressure medications and fluid medications and they've got Parkinson's and they are deconditioned and they can't see very well and they've got poor balance and which of those things is the cause of what happened? So a geriatrician is often involved, so we need a cardiologist, we need a neurologist, we need a geriatrician. Uh, we often need some sort of assessment of the house if they are prone to this happening all the time. So there's, we need a lot of people involved to try to work it out. So about 10 to 20% are going to have a cardiac condition that's going to require some intervention, most likely, including uh, dealing with rapid heart rate by medication or by defibrillator sometimes, dealing with slow heart rate by pacemakers, dealing with aortic valve disease by uh, aortic valve surgery or TAVI. So, uh, but it's also important because if it's not one of those things, the person's still fainting. The person's still becoming unconscious and falling to the ground. One in three of them are going to hurt themselves. And of those, some of them are going to hurt themselves really badly. So even if it's not a cardiac cause where we are actually saving lives, we are reducing significant morbidity by people fainting. And a lot of the people who are fainting are elderly patients, often socially isolated. 
um, scared. I'm going to faint I'm by myself. I'm going to hit my head, I'm going to break my hip. So it's important to try to work out those sort of problems as well. Um, as I said, in the emergency department, we, uh, we have to make all those decisions. Uh, we tend to admit a lot of patients because of the complexity and hope we can sort them out uh, in the inpatient wards.